So you know how I say it's really easy to talk about books that I love? Well, it's equally easy for me to talk about books that I hated. Hi, hello, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alex, and today we are talking about my least favorite books from 2022. Now, these are books that I just happened to read in 2022. They're not books that were necessarily released last year. Um, what qualifies as a book that I hated? Well, it's a spectrum. <laughs> but usually if I give a book three stars, it means I didn't like it, but I didn't hate it. So in today's episode, it's going to be any book that I gave three stars or less. Because three stars means I, I didn't like it. And But part of the reason I didn't like it probably didn't have anything to do with the writing or the author. It was probably 100% subjective to me personally. Like, I personally didn't like it, but it's probably an okay book. Now, two stars, I hated it. It had some fundamental issues. I won't ever recommend it to someone. And one star, I regret ever picking it up. Now, I don't think there's any one star books. Um, from 2022. Now, if you go back and read my, or read, if you go back and watch my least favorite from 21, there are some one stars in there. And those books are just like awful to me. I don't think there's any one stars for this list. That's a lot of three stars, which means, um, yeah, uh, it probably was just me. So I was making the list. It's pretty long, so I'm going to break this into three separate episodes. Today we're only going to do five titles. But let's not waste any more time. Hit all the buttons down below so you know what I'm posting. I post every week, and all we do on this channel is talk about books. So if you like listening to people talk about books, I'm here every week doing just that for you. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get into it. The first book I'm going to talk to you about today is Definitely Dead by Charlene Harris. Okay, this is from the Suki Stackhouse series, which if you watched... Uh, my open series post I did last month, I talked about this series. Um, it's really just not for me. And this was the book that just sent me over the edge. Why this book? I don't know. I don't know, because like, when I think back on it, I think this is just when it finally dawned on me that every book was basically identical. The main character I did not like. She was like very judgmental, but she always like made a point to be like, I'm not a judgmental girl. Yes, you were. Yes, she is. She'd be judging everybody. No, she'd be, she'd be judging every other woman. And that was like very apparent in this book. And I didn't vibe with that. And then when I started thinking back over the other books, I was like, she's like that in every book. Yeah. And this really just highlighted the fact that Every guy in every book in this series just falls over himself for this girl. And I don't get it. Like, at all. I don't get it. And this this book was another, like, highlighter that every guy was just going to fall for her no matter what. And I was like, it's just boring. You know, it's boring to read everybody being in love with her, I guess. So, yeah, this one, um, I think this was one of the three-star ones because... This is a really loved series. Like, I know a lot of people who love this book and love this series and stuff. So, it's just me. I, I didn't vibe with it anymore. And, yeah, this was the book that was, like, put everything into focus for me. Of why I didn't like, or why I didn't, like, love the other parts of the series. This book kind of put a magnifying glass on all of it for me. The next book I'm going to talk about. And, y'all, this one might shock you if you've ever, if you've been with my channel for a minute. But it's the Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix because y'all know how much I love Grady Hendrix. This book, though, oh, he got me. Like, I was so upset because this had a lot of promise. So basically, we have, um, y'all know what Final Girls are. They're the girls that um, survive after a night of, like, horror, basically. And every girl in this book was based off a um, 90s cult thriller slasher film, which was super cool. And so we have all these final girls and we're getting all their stories and stuff. And I was like, this is going to be a really cool novel. 
except the big reveal. I figured it out like halfway through the book and it just wasn't very surprising. It wasn't very gotcha. Uh, the way that he wrote these characters together, I didn't like. Like it was supposed to be kind of like this group effort to um, end the killing and it, it didn't feel like that. I didn't get enough of the stories on the page that I was expecting. There was just a lot of letdowns for this book. And I was really disappointed because I honestly love Grady Hendrix. Like, great nostalgic writer, great horror writer, lots of gore. I was super excited for this book and it really just fell flat for me. And there was a lot of holes and I didn't appreciate that at all. And I was actually watching someone on TikTok the other day and she was talking about this book and it really broke my heart because she picked it up and she said, I will never read Grady Hendrix again because this was the first book I read from him and I absolutely hated it. And I thought, oh my gosh, I was so upset that she said she was writing off Grady Hendrix altogether because there's a lot of other books that he's written that I absolutely loved. This was the first one that really disappointed me. And yeah, that made me kind of sad for her, but I mean, uh... When I listened to her kind of talk about it, it seemed like she had a lot of other issues with the book besides what I had issues with. So, yeah, probably Grady Hendrix isn't really for her. But, yeah, this one really disappointed me um, because I, I really had high expectations for it. The next book I'm going to talk about is The Art of Starving by Sam J. Miller. So, this was definitely like a two-star rating because I did not like this book. Um, so let me just talk about it a little bit because I feel like um, the first two um, that we talked about, the Sookie Stackhouse series, like I've already kind of talked about that and the Grady Hendrix book. I feel like a lot of people already knew what that was about. This book though you probably have never heard of. So basically we have this young teen boy. I think he's like middle school, so probably like 14. Um, his sister receives like a lot of bullying from school and then she just kind of runs away. And so he's decided that he's going to get to the bottom of why his sister ran away, right? And he goes through this kind of depressive episode and stops eating. And then he believes that him starving himself gives him superpowers and that he can use the superpowers to find his sister. Now, you're probably thinking, Alex, why did you pick up this book? Okay, so I picked up this book thinking it was going to be kind of like that film To the Bone with Keanu Reeves. So I absolutely love that movie. And I was like, it. this book has an interesting premise. And I'd like to see um, how the author tackles this very taboo, difficult subject. And um, it, it was also supposed to have a lot of really good rep, um, LGBTQ representation. Eh, spoiler alert, it didn't. But, um, so I was like, it, it sounds really interesting. Like, I'll give it a go because I think at the point, at that point, I was really wanting to branch out and read new things. But I don't know what this book was besides just trigger, 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 trigger. Like, if you struggle with an eating disorder, if you struggle with suicide ideation, if you struggle with like being bullied, um, animal torture, any of those things, you should not read this book. Like, I just felt, I felt like the author was taking it in a, the completely wrong direction and almost like fantasizing or like glorifying uh, eating disorders. And it was like, this is not what we should be doing, right? Like, I just felt like it veered so far off course that I was like, I don't even know what I'm reading. And I was just, I don't even struggle with any of those things. But I was like, I could easily see if a younger person who was struggling with these things would identify with this main character in the wrong way. Do you know what I mean? So, another part of this story is I got on TikTok because at the time, well, I mean, I still do. I, I have a TikTok page, a new channel, if you want to go check it out, blah, blah, blah. Um, I got on TikTok and talked about how much I disliked this book, basically having this same conversation I'm having with you right now. 
I got a community guidelines violation talking about how much I hated this book because I thought that it was not properly written for the subject matter at hand. I got a community guidelines um, violation and it was the first one I'd ever gotten and I was like super sad because I felt like it was important to tell people don't read this book. And that happening to me was actually the reason I started looking into pursuing a channel on YouTube. So, yeah, this one got like a super low rating for me. And the thing is, the ratings for this book were actually pretty high. So I don't, I don't know. It might just have been me, but I don't think it was done well. Okay, the next book we're going to talk about is No Exit by Taylor Adams. Okay. <laughs> this is another one of those books that I was like, it had like a lot of potential and the execution was just not there. So we have um, our main character Darby and she's trying to get like across the country because her mother is like on her deathbed and she wants to say goodbye to her mom one last time. Well, she gets stuck in a snowstorm trying to get from where she is to where her mom is and she's forced to pull off like at a rest stop area. And when she pulls off there, there's like three other people, five, four, four other people there and some cars. And as they're all kind of sitting there, she figures out when she goes outside to try and like make a phone call, you know, bad cell reception or whatever. She finds a young girl trapped inside a van in the parking lot. And she's like, oh my gosh, they have her like tied up in the back of this van. What am I going to do? How am I going to get her out? How did she get in there? Blah, blah, blah. So that's the basis of the story. Okay. When I picked up this book, this was picked from my book club. Excellent reviews, right? But after I read the description, I'm like, I don't really see how this book is going to hold up. Do you know what I mean? Because in my head, I was like, couldn't you just, like, casually ask someone, like, what did you drive? Or, like, what were you driving in? Or did you get stuck? Something like that. Because there's not that many people there, and there's not that many cars in the parking lot. It's going to be easy to be, if 2 plus 2 is 4, you know, it's going to be kind of easy to pinpoint whose van that was. So then, then what? And, yeah, I was sitting there, like, within the first 30, 40 pages... They figured out who the van belonged to. And then I was like, okay, so now what? Um, 100 pages later of now what? We finally got to the peak of the story. The pace, not good. It was so slow. It was just dragging. Because like I said, there wasn't a lot to work with. Like it's four people stuck in one building in the middle of the snow. There's not a lot to work with there. Like, this book was entirely way too long for how short the plot line was. Um, lots of continuity errors, lots of little plot holes. Our main character was just, to me, she was unbearable. Like, she was insanely impulsive. She never thought any of her decisions through. And so, like, every time she'd make it, she would just make a snap decision and go with it. I'm sitting there thinking, that's not a good idea. Why, why sit and think about it for a minute? No, she was highly impulsive. She had no plans ever that worked out. And it was just like a three ring circus of a night trying to figure all this out. Now, at the very end of the novel, great moments, great gore moments that were just like sending me. But I had to read 200 pages of not so great stuff to get that. And I was like, I didn't appreciate being put through the, you know, mental gymnastics Olympics for 200 pages to be here finally. So yeah, to me, it was like a little too little too late. And I could definitely see people DNFing this book because it was really slow. And I just didn't think the plot line held up for that long. I did turn this into a film. And I will say um, the good parts about the book didn't make it into the film. Like there was this really cool, and I will say this now that I've like bashed this book, there was this really cool understory in the book that they didn't explore enough, if you ask me, but it was in there and they didn't put that into the film. And I thought that was the point of the book that needed to be more highlighted 
and that if they put it into the film it'd be even better. So that plot line didn't even make it into the book. I mean the film. Um, the film did like have a bit more urgency but um, they were very creative with the story in general. Like I will say they, they took a lot of creative um, ability with that. So the movie was fine. The book was okay. I think I ended up giving this one like three stars because it was like, I, I, the reviews are good. So there's obviously some people that really liked it, but for me, it didn't work. Okay. This is the last one I'm going to talk about today and it's Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. And I'm like 100% sure I didn't say that right. You should have just seen the bloopers just now of me trying to get that out. And I'm sure it's not correct. So I'm pretty sure this one has been turned into a film also, but I have not seen it. Um, I feel like I want to do a film to book, a book to film uh, comparison for this. So it's on the list of things to do. I didn't love this book because I feel like the um, premise of the book promised something completely different than what was delivered. So premise of the book, we have a group of young people that are at a private boarding school in England and they find out at some point that this is not any normal boarding school that they're there for a very specific purpose and the purpose is not directly revealed to them until they're older and that they're there to then go on from the school and live have like a gap year essentially and then eventually donate all their vital organs for other people basically so they're basically there to be um organ donors like they're and when they start going to the school they're little like four or five something like that so that's the premise of the of the book right in my head when i picked up this book and i read the description i was like thinking it's going to be some sci-fi uh, or futuristic book right no it's not i was thinking this is kind of like the island that film with scarlett johansson it's not if you would like to read a book that is based on a group of friends growing up in this environment in this boarding school knowing their full purpose of their life and growing to accept that and moving forward together and trying to find happiness in their lives, then yes, read this book. When you look at it with that perspective, this book is really good. When you look at it at the, at the perspective that I was going in with of we were going to get a lot of answers, we were going to find out, you know, why this was all put together, why they're, this is happening to them, why they were chosen to do this. If you were looking for any kind of answers like that, of the why, the how, you're not going to get it. Okay, I am being as straightforward with you as possible without giving you any spoilers. You will not get that story from this book. Now, if you're wanting something heartfelt and uh, frankly a little sad uh, about just accepting your life as it is and finding happiness and peace, yes. This book works for that, but that's not what I was wanting. <laughs> that's not what I was wanting when I picked it up. Like that's not how the book felt to me when I was reading the description in my hands. So it didn't work for me. And, um, the writing was insanely cyclical. Like it'd be like, she's sitting under a tree, but first let me tell you about why this tree is so important to me and my friends. And then we would launch off into a story about why this tree was so important and then be like, okay, now that you know why the tree is so important, we can move forward. And I was like, I didn't need to know that though. I didn't need to know why that tree was that important. You could have just said it was important and we could have moved on because that little side story you told me really wasn't that interesting. I see now I, I sound like super stuck up when I, when I hear myself saying that, but the writing was really cyclical in this book. Instances like that would happen literally all over the place. Um, the premise didn't deliver for me and I was really disappointed by the time we got to the end and like I didn't get any answers about anything basically. But if you look at it like a just a journey 
then yeah, I think it does work like that. So I think I ended up giving this three stars just because my interpretation of it was uh, um, disappointed. But I think if you look at it, like the way that he wrote it was to be a journey and to look at how people treat other people and that kind of a thing. And then it really delivered on that front. And I think that my expectations did not meet what the author's um, vision for the book was. So that's on me. That's a subjectivity issue. Like, that's my problem, basically. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's all I have for you guys today. Um, yeah. <laughs> I sat here and talked for, like, a really long time. Like I said, it's so easy to talk about books that you love and books that you don't love because... Yeah, and then if the book falls in between, it's just kind of like, sorry, I liked you, but not enough to love you, but and I didn't hate you enough to, like, hate you, hate you. So, yeah, that's all I have for today. I will continue this series as the year goes on, and we'll finish it out. I've got two more sections of it to do. So, yeah, we're, did you read any of those books? Did you love them? Did you hate them? Have I, liked helped you whittle down your TBR? Or sometimes when I give negative reviews people are like oh I want to read it now and it's like okay well yeah maybe you'll like it so yeah do you want to read any of them now that I've like said all that so yeah make sure you hit all the buttons down below so you know when I'm posting I post every week and I'm excited about all the upcoming content for the new for the rest of the new year because I feel like it's like it's not new anymore you know we're in February it's not so shiny anymore <laughs> whatever um, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!